Hello, welcome everyone. My name is Apostle Catherine and I'm the lead pastor of Fivefold Church and I'm so excited to welcome you to Fivefold Church Live tonight. It's going to be a powerful time in the presence of God. Share this with your friends, be a blessing to them. Miracles are going to happen today. Our Jesus who is alive is here to touch you, to free you, to heal you. It's time to receive an encounter with God. I am so excited for what he's going to do. I am expectant for what he is going to do. I'm just amazed by all the testimonies that I'm hearing from you all. As you're, as you're watching, many of you are commenting testimonies of what God is doing, and he's doing all sorts of miracles from pain leaving bodies to delivering people, setting people free. Um, there was a testimony I received yesterday. Uh, a woman says that she was watching the live, and as I prayed for her, she was having really bad thoughts, and as I prayed for her, she said that she felt something leave from her, and she immediately felt peace and calm and has felt that way ever since. I also received another testimony that was so powerful um, from yesterday. There was a 14-year-old girl who said that she had seen my TikTok video um, and she had been struggling with uh, an addiction. She described it as a disgusting addiction her whole life and she's tried so many times to stop and she hasn't been able to. Um, but when she watched the TikTok video, she said she felt, she felt peace, she felt calm, and she realized she was free after that because she hasn't had the addiction. It's been a week since, since, that, since she saw the video. She's free, hallelujah. I'm so blessed and touched to hear these testimonies. Thank you for sharing. Continue to share. God is truly moving, and, and I wanna share today how, how God's heart is to free his people, is to free you. He is full of love. And I know many of you have heard that Jesus is love. He's full of love. He loves you so much. But I don't know if, if, if you all have known that he is about action, that he wants to demonstrate his love through action, that there are certain bondages that many of you have, that many people have, that Jesus truly wants to just set you free in a moment. Not, you, you don't even have to do anything. It's not about that, but it's about Jesus just coming in and setting you free. Hallelujah. Um, he, in 1 John 3, 8, it says, the Son of God appeared for this purpose, to destroy the works of the devil. When Jesus came on this earth, that was his mission. It says that's what, that's what his purpose was, to destroy the works of the devil. To destroy the works of the devil. So you cannot love without destroying the works of the devil. It's not all about mushy, gushy stuff, but it's about with action, setting people free who are in bondage, who are afflicted. When Jesus walked on this earth, he, he was constantly casting demons out of people. The Bible is upfront about it. The Bible doesn't hide it. The Bible speaks so clearly. He comes and casts demons out of many people and they would become his disciples. It speaks in detail. There's this one man who was possessed with so many demons and the demons start to tremble so much and freak out as, as Jesus comes near the man because they see the anointing in him. They see the power that he has to make them to leave, or make them to go, get out of the body they're in. And they start trembling, they start manifesting, they start speaking out of the lips of the gentleman that they were possessing and they say please please don't kill us please instead cast us out into pigs and there was legions there was thousands of them the bible talks in detail of this and 
Jesus says, okay. So he casts the demons out of the person, all of them, thousands of them, all of them, and they go into the pigs. Um, when Jesus is healing people, he is destroying the works of the devil. Sickness comes from the enemy. There's many different ways that the enemy tries to come and bring oppression, bring affliction, bring bondage. Many different ways that he comes through the mind, attacking the body, attacking protection, attacking finances. There's many different areas, but it's so important for us to understand as believers that the devil exists, number one. Number two, that Jesus came to destroy the works of the devil. Number three, the devil still exists even though Jesus destroyed the works of the devil. But we have the power to access that complete freedom from the enemy's hold. That's what Jesus did. He came to destroy the power the devil has on humanity. But it's not this like magic thing that happens automatically. We have to know how to access this freedom, this gift that is already ours. So a couple days ago on Tuesday, I shared with you your inheritance that Jesus has given you. What he paid for on that cross. All the things that you have received. You have it already. I shared this and if you didn't see it, watch it. It's on our Facebook page. Right now it's called Know Your Inheritance. It'll be on YouTube by next week. I shared how you have to know what your full inheritance is in order to access it. What Jesus did when he went on that cross is he destroyed the works of the devil over humanity's, over humanity's lives. He tore the veil so now we have direct connection with God. So he destroyed that work of the devil of stealing that, that one-on-one -on -one connection that Adam and Eve used to enjoy before the enemy took it. Jesus restored it. Jesus paid the price so that sin has no power over you anymore. The devil had made it so, the, so sin used to have power over people. But now when you give your life to Jesus, Jesus destroyed that power of sin over you anymore, where it's all wiped away completely. You are clothed with righteousness. Righteousness, meaning you are holy, you are pure, you're a new creation, you're a child of God. You belong to the family of God. You are an heir. All of these things are destroying the devil's work and returning God's original intention. By his stripes you are healed. This is another one of your inheritance that many don't know. But sickness is, is, is brought on by the enemy. On the cross, it says, by his stripes, you are healed, the Bible says. So Jesus' blood, there's power in the blood. There's all of this power for different, different areas. It's not just a ticket to heaven that that blood paid for. There's so many different parts to the power that's in the blood of Jesus. So by his stripes, you are healed. The whippings, the lashing, the scourgings that Jesus endured, that specific blood that was, sh was shed when he was enduring those scourges, that was for your healing. That was destroying the work of the devil of bringing sickness to your life. Jesus destroyed that. No more sickness. I'm giving my people healing now. It's their right. It's their inheritance. This is theirs. I'm giving them freedom. No more oppression from the enemy. Another thing that Jesus has given you is protection. John 10, 28, I give them eternal life and they shall never perish. No one will snatch them out of my hand. Well, this eternal life, this protection he's talking about begins now, not just when you die and go to heaven, but this protection you have now. Jesus' hands are on your life. That's your inheritance. That's why you don't need to be afraid. You are protected. Jesus has given you this. This is your inheritance. You don't have to be worried when you get on a plane. You don't have to be worried when there's threats of, of, of an attack or something. You can know, Jesus put me on this earth to do a job 
there's work to be done for his kingdom. There's a reason I'm here. I know that there's my purpose has to be fulfilled still. There's more he wants me to do on this earth. So I know he's protecting me. This threat's coming, but I know he's protecting me. There's threat of, uh, of a pandemic, but I know he's protecting me. I've got things to do for him on this earth. It's not time to go to heaven yet. John 10.10 10 says, the thief, come, the thief comes only to steal and kill and destroy. I have come that they may have life and have it to the full. Jesus says that the thief came to destroy and kill. But Jesus says, I came for the opposite so that they may have life and have it to the full, have it more abundantly. This passage is meaning every area of your life. This passage means that you won't be in lack. It's your inheritance to have abundance. Like when you're a child and you have parents, you don't ever think about money. You're, you're taken care of. You know you'll have what you need. It's not a thought. Will I be able to eat? It's not a thought. Will I be able to get books for school? So as children of God, we have been given this inheritance. I have abundant life in area and in every area. And this includes finances. This includes finances. And you can be confident in that. Because the Bible says that God gives seed to the sower. We are called to be on this earth and sow. Sow in every area. Sow with kindness, with love, with our words. Sow with our actions. Sow financially. Sow into the kingdom of God. Sow into people's lives that need it. Help the needy. There's these orphans that we help in Tanzania, East Africa, that God has called us to raise awareness for their needs. He says in the word, help the widows, help the orphans, take care of them. We have the seed to do that. And, it, and as long as we keep sowing, sowing into the kingdom, the work of God, the church, sowing into people who, who are in need, the orphans, people in your life who are in need, there's a principle in the Bible that more will be given to you, more will be added into you. So not just what you're giving will be returned, but more, but more. So we need to know this inheritance. It is, it is not my inheritance to be in lack. I have the inheritance as a child of God to have abundant life in my finances too, for God's purposes, not for selfish purposes, no, but for God's purposes. He wants us to be generous. He's called us to be generous. So when we have the heart to be generous, when we can know this is, this is our inheritance, it will come pouring to us the seeds. God can entrust us with the seeds when we know who we are, when we, when we know our inheritance, and when our plans to sow are good, are God's. What we do with the seed we're given aligns with God's will. We will be accessing the seeds we will be accessing abundant provision for God's will, for God's purposes. And another part of, our, of your inheritance, something that is yours already, you just have to know it so you can access it, is peace. John 14, 27, I leave the gift of peace with you, my peace, not the kind of fragile peace given by the world, but my perfect peace. Don't yield to fear or be troubled in your hearts. Instead, be courageous. So Jesus says, I'm leaving my perfect peace with you. This here is an inheritance that you get to receive too and enjoy. The devil has come to steal peace, but I have come to restore it, to return it, and it will stay with you as long as you can know that it is yours. Have the faith, this is mine. Jesus has given me perfect peace and follow his commands. Don't yield to fear. You have this as your inheritance. You just have to access it. You have to believe it. You have to put his word into practice. Speaking again of provision, of, of abundant life, speaking in your finances, the enemy came to destroy abundant life came to just came to bring poverty and even we see one of the curses in the 
in the Bible, one of the curses after the fall was that you will, it says you will work the ground, you will work the land and all you do won't be good enough. It's like your work won't produce much fruit is what the curse essentially says after the fall of Adam and Eve, that you'll work the ground, that you'll be working the field and this curse of poverty will rest upon you. You won't see the fruit of your labors. That was the curse. The enemy brought that. But Jesus came to destroy that work of the devil of poverty. He came to bring abundant life. And now it says in the Bible that God says, I will bless the work of your hands. When you go to work for me, I'm putting supernatural blessing and favor upon your hands. So you will have abundance, abundant provision. This is your inheritance. So the enemy has tried to keep people in the dark for so long of what Jesus actually gave them. Because if people don't know, can't see what Jesus gave them, they cannot access that. So the enemy, this has been his strategy for so many years, for so many generations. The enemy strategically has tried to hide. He does not want people to know that he exists. He does not want the church to know that he exists because then he can hide behind things and never be called out, never be cast out. He hides behind things like diagnoses. He hides behind things uh, like medicine. Medicine covers up things and he just stays there. The root of the issue is there still. Medicine is covered up, covers it up. He hides, he hides. The church needs to be upfront and, and teach and preach the devil exists. You don't even, you don't hear even devil, the word devil or demons in many sermons. But when we, but Je it says Jesus came to destroy the works of the devil. The great commission was preach the gospel, heal the sick, cast out demons, raise the dead. That was like the summary, the big boom. I mean, we've seen over time that you don't hear that. Like in the church by and large, you don't hear, this is what we are called to do. This is what you're called to do. Preach the gospel, heal the sick, cast out demons, raise the dead. It's so rare to hear that. But this is the great commission that Jesus gave to the disciples. It says in the book of Acts, the disciples were casting out demons all of the time. In the church by and large, it's not talked about. It makes people feel uncomfortable. It's like, let's preach about anything but that. The devil loves that. The devil loves that. The devil doesn't mind if we preach like just love, just love, just love, but we don't preach about the action, the action of demonstrating love, but we, we allow people to be stuck in bondage and feeling ashamed for it. We say, people say, many preachers, many people say, you know, don't sin, don't do this, don't do this, but what we see Jesus doing is we see him freeing somebody and saying, now come follow me and don't do the things you are doing anymore. But these people had to be free first before they could not do the things they were doing anymore. When a door is opened and this can, this can happen before you, before you know Jesus or before you fully know Jesus and have given your life to Jesus, it's something to feel ashamed about, but you can open a door to the enemy and then once that door, like you engage in some sin, and once you do that, a door is open, the enemy has access now, legal access in the spiritual realm. And this can now be a time where there's a, there's a stronghold, there's a real bondage, there's a real chain now that the enemy had legal access to because of what one did in the spiritual realm, allowing him in, allow, allowing him in right? So this, there's this bondage here. There's this chain here. There's this affliction, this oppression here. 
where the enemy has legal access in the spiritual realm. These are deeper spiritual principles I'm sharing with you now, teaching you. When this happens, it needs Jesus to come on the scene and break that chain. The yoke was broken by the anointing. The yoke was destroyed by the anointing. So there becomes these yokes on people's lives. And Jesus doesn't look at people and say, you shouldn't have done that. You need to get yourself out of this. No, he comes with love and compassion and understanding with hatred of the devil and love for his children. And he comes and he sets his child free. He reveals himself to his child and he says, follow me. If someone had struggled before opening the door to the enemy in something, now they've encountered Jesus. They've just fallen in love with him that they truly don't even want to do that thing anymore. They're so amazed at how God freed them. And once one is free, they really do have the power, the ability to not go there anymore, to not go to that addiction anymore. They are free. So now they have the free choice. But before that, when there is a bondage, they can try all they want and the, the devil has a hold, the anointing, the power of God is needed to break that off. But people sh should not feel ashamed of, of you know, opening a door to the enemy where they are in bondage because until you know the, the full love of Jesus, until you fully encounter the power of God, you don't have the power. I mean, the enemy is real. He's after people. He's after people tempting, tempting, tempting. It's a spiritual war. And the only power that you have to resist the enemy is to really encounter Jesus, to really encounter him in his full power. I was a lukewarm Christian for so much of my life. So I was opening doors to the enemy in certain areas of my life. I knew Jesus, I loved Jesus, but I hadn't yet encountered the fullness of Jesus, the power of God to really like move my heart to really not desire to, to engage anymore in the world. And so when I encountered the power of God and the anointing flooded in my life, broke things off, I lost a taste for alcohol. I completely lost the taste for that. Um, I lost the taste for needing to be with people all the time. I used to be that way. Um, certain like addictions or th things that I was just drawn to so much in the world fell away when I encountered the anointing, the power of God. And I truly literally had no desire to engage in those things anymore. So this is how it's supposed to be. And this is what we see in the Bible. It says in the Bible how Jesus would free people. He would cast demons out of people and they immediately followed him forever. They were a disciple. Then they begin walking in the power of God. It's such an amazing transformation of Saul. He was, he was killing Christians and one encounter with the power of God makes him to change drastically, has no desire to live a religious, judgmental life anymore. And now he becomes this most powerful vessel of God in the New Testament. It is so important for us to know these things in the spiritual realm. Know that the devil is at work but know that Jesus' power is greater and Jesus' power is available to destroy the work of the devil right now, right in this moment. You don't have to do anything. He'll just come and free you right in this moment. Just like we've heard these testimonies that I shared in the beginning, people being free immediately. When we're able to see the spiritual truth, like what I'm sharing right now, your spiritual eyes are, being, are opening, this is how we're able to receive God's heart of compassion and love for people. When my eyes opened up to the fact that demons existed, that demons would possess people, that what I would see this anointed man of God and full of anointing, full of power of God. And I was at this church service and these people, it was just like reading the Bible, how the, the, the demons manifested and they started, the demons started speaking out of the people and they would say, I'm trying to kill her. I'm trying to kill her. That's what would, the demon would say out of the person's mouth. Just like in the, just like in the Bible, how the demons spoke out of the, the man with legions of demons that were cast out into the pigs. They would say all sorts of specific things of how they were trying to kill this person. 
I want her to commit suicide. I'm trying, I'm putting all these thoughts in her head. The, the demon will say that out of the person's mouth. And I witness this for myself. And though this is very abrasive, uh, abrupt to witness, it was one of the greatest things to happen to me. It was one of the greatest catalysts of my heart being more like Jesus. Because number one, I immediately, um, in one moment of seeing this, of witnessing this, I grew so much compassion upon people. So much compassion like never before. All the judgment went away. We have these judgments. How could this person be so mean? How could they say something so mean to me? Or how could this person get themselves caught up in such an addiction and they, they did this horrible thing? Or you see stories on the news of bad things that people do and you just go to judgment, right? Just instantly, how could they do this? But when I witnessed this, when you witness how the devil's real, how he's truly oppressing people and oppressing people differently, and some people it's really intense, you see why the person did the thing they did. The oppression from the enemy was so strong. It was out of that person's ability to control at that point. And you just have this heart, this heart of compassion like Jesus did. Like what Jesus saw when he walked on the earth is he saw people oppressed by the enemy. And he said he came, his purpose, the Son of God appeared for this purpose, to destroy the works of the devil. So he comes and he doesn't come with judgment. Like, why did you do that? Why did No, he knows the one sole issue. This person needs freedom. This person needs the yoke broken off their life. And he sets them free. And they're free. And they have no desire to, to do the things they were doing before, to be involved in addiction, to speak so meanly. There's some people that are just full in their, their, their mind with, with thoughts like, you're not good enough, y you're a mess, you'll never be good enough, um, who will ever love you, you're hopeless. There's, there's people in their minds that are filled with their thoughts. That's their thoughts. But that comes from the enemy. That's demonic oppression constantly on a person. And so how do you expect someone to, to speak kindly when that's, they're being bombarded with that? How, how could they not just scream and burst out at anybody? Because the attack is so intense. So... Ah, it's so important that we understand this reality of the spiritual realm so we can see people how Jesus sees, number one. So we can see immediately. We don't judge ever. We're, we immediately see this person needs the anointing of God to break a yoke off of their life. They need freedom. Number two, so we can have compassion on ourselves. Many of you, you need a yoke broken in your life and many of you have felt full of shame and guilt for engaging in an addiction still. Many of you have felt like weak because you, you keep trying to stop and you don't, you can't. Many of you feel like you're just too weak, but that's not true. That's not true. You need freedom. You need Jesus to just free you. It's not, God never wants you to feel shame or condemnation. He just wants you to be free and know his love. There's some people who feel so guilty because they lash out and they say things they don't mean and they feel so, how could I do that? How could I do that? How could I do that? And you've tried to control your tongue, but you, you can't. I'm telling you that the shame and condemnation is never of God. God wants to free you. When, if you're having thoughts constantly in your mind, you need freedom and God is going to free you today in a split moment, and God will give you the strength to live pleasing to Him when you are free, when you are free. Also, why don't we see the power of God in, in, in church much these days? Why don't we see dev, uh, demons cast out of people? Why don't we see people being healed, by and large? Because people are not acknowledging that the enemy exists. God has given us authority on this earth, authority over the devil. It says in Matthew, Matthew 16, 19, Jesus says to his apostle, Peter, I tell you, you are Peter, and on this rock I will build my church, and the gates of Hades will not prevail against it. I will give you the keys of the kingdom. Whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven, 
Whatever you, whatever you loose on earth will be loosed in heaven. So Jesus says here to his apostle Peter, who walked with him, who had been equipped and trained, had served Jesus, had surrendered all so that anointing could pour into him so that he eventually came to this point where Jesus could truly hand him the keys of the kingdom, where now he truly had authority over the devil completely. And it says, Peter, you, you will bind. Jesus says this, you will bind. I give you the keys, of the, I give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven. Whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven. Whatever will be loosed on earth will be loosed in heaven. That is powerful. He's saying, Peter, whatever you bind, whatever you loose. So that's, that's meaning, what does that mean? That means in the spiritual realm, uh, uh, casting d- demons out, executing authority, driving out the powers of darkness out of people's lives. I send this spirit out of this person now in Jesus' name. I bind the spirit, it has no power over this person again. That's the action of binding and loosing things, executing authority. This, this is how it's supposed to be, that we wouldn't be like, Jesus, please do this and do this for this person and do this for this person and do this for this person. But how it actually is in the spiritual realm, how God intended it to be, is for us to bind things, loose things, declare things, drive out demons. He says, you heal the sick, you cast out the demons. You use the authority I've given you to set my people free. So Jesus destroyed the works of the devil. He destroyed the curse. But now we, as disciples of him, have the keys of the kingdom to continue Jesus' work. Jesus came on the earth and he demonstrated what we would then be doing when he was casting out demons, when he was healing the sick. He then says, you will do what I do and what I did in greater As I heal the sick, cast out demons, raise the dead, you do that now too. So he came, he demonstrated, he gave us the keys. And now with his power in us, we do those things. We do those things. So, so much of the the body of Christ, the church, doesn't even acknowledge that the devil exists, doesn't even acknowledge that people need deliverance, need freedom from demonic oppression. They don't acknowledge that at all. So how are they gonna be able to access the keys of the kingdom? How do you execute authority over something you're not even acknowledging exists? The devil loves that people don't acknowledge that he exists because they can have no authority over him in that case. There's principles in the spiritual realm of how to to free people, how to heal the sick. There's principles we, We've got to follow. Like the, there's principles and order in the spiritual realm. And the enemy knows them, knows how they work. The enemy, the, de- the demons recognize anointing and they are forced to submit to anointing, to true anointing, to true power of God, where someone's really accessing the keys of the kingdom. The demons have to respond to that. That's what Jesus did. He made it so that the demons have to respond to true anointing the true power of God. He didn't make it so that the demons have to respond to any Christian. No. Only when people are doing things God's way. We can't be a Christian how we want to be in our own way. So you have to, um, there's principles in the spiritual realm of how to access these keys of the kingdom, how to destroy the works of the devil. And we see an example of this in Acts 19, 11. Now God worked unusual, it says, now God worked unusual, another transition says, extraordinary miracles by the hands of Paul, of Apostle Paul. So that even handkerchiefs or aprons were brought from his body to the sick and the diseases left them and the evil spirits went out of them. Then some of the itinerant Jewish exorcists took it upon themselves to call the name of the Lord Jesus over those who had evil spirits, saying, we exercise you by the Jesus whom Paul preaches. Also, there were seven sons of Sceva, 
a Jewish priest, who did so. And the evil spirit answered and said, Jesus, I know, and Paul, I know, but who are you? Then the man in whom the evil spirit was leaped on them, overpowered them, and prevailed against them, so that they fled out of that house naked and wounded. This became known both to all Jews and Greeks. Um, So here we see that demons recognized Jesus. Demons recognized Paul, it says. It says, Jesus I know, and Paul I know. So they knew specifically Paul because he was carrying anointing, because he was truly accessing the keys of the kingdom, because he acknowledged that that demons existed, and he knew his job was to execute authority over them. So he knew who he was, he knew his inheritance in Jesus, and he knew why he was on this earth to execute authority over the enemy. So because he knew these things and because he was saying yes to God of this commission, yes, God, I will do this. I will destroy the works of the enemy. He he truly had authority over the demons, all authority. So the demons would tremble. Oh, we know Paul. We know Paul. So they would tremble when Paul came close, full of anointing, Paul full of the anointing of Jesus. They would tremble. Oh, we know Paul. But... They did not tremble with other people who obviously believed Jesus existed and had power because they said they were, they were trying to uh, cast out demons using the name of Jesus. It says these, these Jewish priests and they say, ah, I don't know you. I don't know you. And they demonstrated that they, they, they had actual authority over them so that the demons have power. Not, not even close to the power of Jesus. But when you are not accessing the keys of the kingdom, when you are not accessing anointing, doing things God's way, this is when the enemy can start to have, have hold, have power. As it shows here that they, the, the demons actually leaped on them, overpowered them, prevailed against them. So we as the body of Christ should take this seriously, should take this seriously of we never want the enemy to have power over our lives because we are doing things the wrong way. But no, we take this commission that Jesus gave us seriously. We will not be afraid or ashamed to preach the truth, to teach the truth. And we will be careful to follow God's way, to follow God's order, so that we can truly access the full inheritance, so that we can access the keys of the kingdom, so that the demons recognize us and tremble and are afraid and don't don't know they have no power. They see that we have such power over them. Now we're gonna go to Luke 10, 17. I want you to see how this work of destroying the works of the enemy is what believers have always been called to do. Luke 10, 17, there were 70 missionaries that returned to Jesus. There were, there were 70 disciples of Jesus and Jesus had sent them out on a mission to go do ministry, to preach the gospel, to heal the sick, to cast out demons. He sent them while Jesus was still on the earth. He sent them like, okay, I'm, I've poured out some anointing in you, now go. Do the work that I've taught you. And this is what you will do when I go to heaven, when I'm resurrected and leave you with the job. So it says, um, when the 70 disciples returned to Jesus, they were ecstatic with joy, telling him, Lord, even the demons obeyed us when we commanded them in your name. Jesus replied, while you were ministering, I watched Satan topple until he fell suddenly from heaven like lightning to the ground. Now you understand that I have imparted to you all my authority to trample over his kingdom. You will trample upon every demon before you and overcome every power Satan possesses. Absolutely nothing will be able to harm you as you walk in this authority. Powerful. 
However, your real source of joy isn't merely that these spirits submit to your authority, but that your names are written in the journals of heaven and that you belong to God's kingdom. This is the true source of your authority. So Jesus is saying, the source of your authority is your relationship with me, is my love for you. That's where your authority comes from. Knowing my love that now flows to my people that you would set them free. It's my love flowing through you. You knowing my love. My love flowing through you that makes the demons have to tremble. It's this compassion for my people, for them to be set free. That's the source of your authority. Jesus only gives this precious anointing when we do things God's way, which includes when our hearts can be molded to his. When he can see, that's my heart. That vessel has my heart of compassion for my people. They're driven by love. They'll do anything for, for me, for my people. They will stand in the face of the enemy, the enemy trying to put up a fight and being nasty and annoying, saying, no, don't do this, no, trying to fight. And they're willing to stand strong and be in that not quite pleasant situation. They're willing to do that out of love for me, God says and love for my people. This is the heart. This is the heart that is needed for the anointing to flow, to walk in this power of God. Verse 21, Luke 10, verse 21, then Jesus overflowing with the Holy Spirit's anointing of joy exclaimed, Father, thank you, for you are Lord supreme over heaven and earth. You have hidden the great revelation of this authority from those who are proud, those wise in their own eyes, and you have shared it with these who humbled themselves. Yes, Father, this is what pleases your heart and the very way you've chosen to extend your kingdom to give those who become like trusting children. Jesus reveals the key of who can access this authority, who can access the keys of the kingdom, have this power. It is absolutely hidden, this revelation is hidden from those who are proud, those who are wise in their own eyes. And it's revealed only to those who have humbled themselves, to those who have become like little children. Hallelujah. It's God's will for all of you to walk in the power of God, to access this anointing in your lives, that demons would tremble when they see you, that people would be healed through your touch, that people would be delivered by your word, that dead things would come to life by your presence. It is God's will. It is God's will. That's why you're here right now. He wants to pour his power, his anointing to you to destroy the works of the devil, what he created you to do. Hallelujah. The key is to become like a child, to empty yourself out, to humble yourself. And you will see God amaze you, amaze you, amaze you with the anointing that he pours into your life, the ways he begins to use you. This is what he wants for you. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father. I want to pray for you all now. God, I thank you so much for this precious revelation that you've revealed to us today, God. And I thank you, Jesus, for your precious anointing. I thank you for your beautiful heart of compassion for your people. Thank you for revealing your love for your people, your desire and ability to free your people. Thank you, Jesus. We thank you, Father, for the people you will free now, right now, who you will heal now, who you will encounter now. We thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah.
Thank you, Lord. Just lift your hands now to God. I, I declare this anointing to come upon you right now, to touch you. I declare this anointing to destroy every work of the devil in your life. I declare that there can be no oppression of the enemy on your life anymore. I declare every chain must be broken off now. By the authority God's given me, I declare every spirit to go, every demonic presence to leave, every demonic oppression to be broken now, every demonic curse to be broken now in Jesus' name, every generational curse to be broken now in Jesus' name. Every single spirit of addiction, I declare, go now in Jesus' name. Receive freedom now. Every single attack on your mind, demonic attack in your mind where you're having recurring negative thoughts, suicidal thoughts, not good enough thoughts, hopeless thoughts. I declare every demonic oppression on your mind to be broken now in Jesus name. Be free now. Every attack on your mind in the night, every attack on your dreams, recurring dreams, demonic recurring dreams, spirit of insomnia, Spirit that wakes you up every night in the middle of the night. I declare it to go now in Jesus' mighty name. Be free. Be free now. Every sickness in your mind, mental sickness in your mind, I declare be free. Go now in Jesus' name. Be healed in your mind now. Be healed now in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Every spirit of infirmity, every spirit of sickness, go now. If spirit of cancer, go now. Someone here has diabetes. I declare, go now. Spirit of diabetes, get out now in Jesus' name. Be healed now. Every issue of blood, every person that has an issue of blood, be free. Be healed now. I declare your blood to be made new now in Jesus' mighty name. There's some people here who have organ issues, someone with a heart issue, and someone with lung issue, and someone with kidney issue. I declare healing to you now in Jesus' name. I declare your organ to be renewed, to be made new now and function properly in Jesus' mighty name. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. Someone here has sight problem has has problem seeing i declare see now in jesus name i declare your sight to be restored now in jesus name god's healing someone's ears someone has had hearing loss someone had hearing loss from from like a loud uh, an accident that was so 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 much loud it destroyed an eardrum I declare healing to your ear now. I declare your, your hearing to be restored in Jesus' mighty name. Be healed now in Jesus' name. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Every anxious thought, every spirit of anxiety, spirit of anxiety, 
there's some people here who are struggling with worrying about many things, worrying about the future, worrying about not having enough, worrying about things not working out. I declare that spirit of anxiety to go now in Jesus' name. Those demonic thoughts be gone. Be gone now in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. And there's someone who has been struggling with thoughts of suicide that have become so real in your mind that you really feel like it is yourself and like the, it's like it's what the only choice. I declare, spirit of suicide, go now in Jesus' name. Get out. You have no power anymore over this precious child of God. You have no power. You are gone forever. Go. You are free. You are free in Jesus' name. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. God is removing guilt and shame right now. Hey, it is so important to understand the enemy's schemes and strategies. I want to reveal to you now, the enemy hates every single one, every single person on this earth he hates. He hates. So, he will, he will try, one of his biggest schemes is to try to fill you with guilt and shame and condemnation. And he will, he will say, come do this, come engage in this sin. He will say, come do this. He will lie to you saying that it's worth it, that it'll be good, it'll bring you happiness. And then once you're there and you do that, then you feel all these thoughts of guilt and shame. Well, that actually came from him. So he brings you here, so now he can plant in lies. Why did you do that? You shouldn't have done that. And then as you try to not do it anymore, more, oh look, you're not good enough, you're not, you don't have enough power to do this, you're weak. Lies, 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 lies. I'm revealing to you the enemy's lies to you. I'm revealing these, these things to you so that the enemy can have no power over your mind anymore. Jesus never, never brings shame, guilt, or condemnation. He does never want, he never wants you to think that one single moment in your life. If you ever are feeling guilt or shame or condemnation, know that's never truth. That never comes from God. That never comes from God. That absolutely comes from the enemy. And you have to, you have to know this. You have to know this. It's, God never wants me to feel this way. Doesn't matter what I've done. I'm never supposed to feel this way. The enemy wants me to feel this way more than anything. I'm not letting him win in my mind. Hallelujah. But I see a strategy specifically of people who are in bondage and needed the power of the anointing to break the yoke. I see this for, for many of you, and I see that many of you have been feeling very guilty and full of condemnation that you've continued in an addiction and haven't been able to stop. Or that you've re repeated a certain sin and you've tried to stop, but you, you, you feel like you failed and you've been feeling guilt and condemnation and just bad about yourself. I declare every person who has been feeling that, I declare the lying spirit of the enemy to get out now in Jesus name. The lying spirit attacking your mind, attacking your thoughts. Get out in Jesus' name. Every, every spirit, every principality who's ruling of guilt and shame and condemnation in your mind, I declare they must go now in Jesus' name. Be free now in Jesus' mighty name. And I release this anointing over you. May you encounter God's touch now. May you be full of his perfect peace in Jesus' name. Thank you. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Lord. 